Champagne to Consciousness. What an interesting name of your upcoming book. Well, the title really speaks to my journey because that's really how it was for me. You know, I was like Hong Kong party girl with my champagne glass. And then I went to Osho and it was all about my yoga mat and consciousness. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Dipti Shah and welcome to my show, Artistry. Today I have with me the Zen goddess from Hong Kong, Ms. Sushma Zahira Gadwani. Hello, Sushma, and welcome to my show. Hi, Dipti. What a pleasure it is to be here. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Sushma, first question. What's with the name? Is it Sushma or is it Zahira? Tell us the mystery behind it. Well, Sushma is my legal name. It was a name, you know, given to me by my parents. Zahira is a name I took myself. So I relate to them differently. Sushma is more like from my conditioning, from my background, from my family. Zahira is a bit more independent. She's spiritually independent. She's liberated. She's free. She's quite fearless. So, you know, my journey is really about integrating those two parts inside me. How does a lawyer from London School of Economics become a Zen goddess? Okay, so um, so I studied law. I did a bachelor's in law at London School of Economics, as you said, and then I did a postgrad in law at Hong Kong University. And then in my traineeships, I kind of arrived, watched, learned, and then got really conflicted because I, I realized very quickly that the reason I was there was not going to get accomplished because what I saw was the law create more separation. I saw it sometimes create more dispute. I saw it very materialistic in its dealings actually. And in spirituality, I saw more unity within the self, like a deeper intimacy with self, which then created a deeper intimacy and harmony with others. In spirituality, I found healing and integration and peace and understanding. In the law, I found it to be fulfilling on a human purpose. Um, of course, in legalities, we do need that function and that structure. But in terms of the heart, soul um, contribution I wanted to make, I really couldn't find it there. What is meditation? So Osho says, meditation is when you're doing nothing at all, bodily, mentally, on no level. When all activity has ceased and you simply are just being, that is what meditation is. In meditation, you're no more your physiology, no more your biology, no more your chemistry, and no more your psychology. All those things are left far away. You come to your most innermost center where this is only pure awareness. So for, med for me, Meditation is about having a witnessing presence. It's watching whatever is happening inside and outside. It's living in that gap in between. It's allowing the pause. Which is your favorite Osho meditation? So I have a few. I think they're all connected. They're my favorites because they all kind of produce a different shift in state. So dynamic meditation and kundalini meditation is really well used on both sides of a workshop. Like dynamic meditation in the morning, very grounding, very cathartic. Kundalini meditation in the evening, that's more feminine, more integrative. When they're used together with therapy, you get really exponential results. Um, you know, Osho always says that ther therapy is a bridge to meditation that meditation is the ultimate result. Um, you know, some of the other meditations produce um, different kind of shifts in state. So some other, some other ones that are my favorites are um, uh, Osho Nada Brahma meditation, which is about, which includes some humming techniques and synchronized hand movements. I find that meditation great to balance yin and yang energies and um, giving and receiving from the universe. Um, another one of my favorites is Atisha's heart meditation, which really supports to 
heal your pains in, in the heart, you know, uh, personal pains, pains that you feel for others. It also allows you to develop a sense of compassion. And I really find that one provide, provides some sort of very heart expansive state after you've done it. Um, another one that I find quite fun to do um, is the no dimensions meditation. That meditation, you know, it, it, it's, it's wonderful to do in a group because there are all these synchronized uh, hand movements. And then the last portion of that meditation includes some whirling, which is a very powerful um, and fun technique to center oneself. Zahira, could you tell us about your experience at the Osho Ashram? So I would say visiting the Osho Ashram has got to be one of the most life-changing experiences that I've had in my entire lifetime. It's, it was kind of like a red pill, blue pill, kind of like the matrix. My life totally changed after I went there. Um, it was quite frightening in the way that it changed because everything, it's like my inner world completely changed. I may have looked the same, but I was no longer the same. I was Hong Kong party girl who turned into a meditator. You know, I, I, I was very conditioned by my culture uh, from my urban fancy lifestyle, you know, and then I went into this land of maroon robes where you melt into one consciousness and, you know, I, I can like a very simple thing that shifted for me was you know, I was a dancer at a very young age. I used to practice Bharat Natyam and classical and all sorts of choreographed dance. And I, as I grew up, I performed a lot. And everything was choreographed and perfect and up on stage and filmed. And, and when, I went, when I went to the Osho International Meditation Resort, dance is used as such an ex, um, expression of self. It's used as a... Um, exploration into flow and it's used as a tool of meditation and how dance changed for me because the quality of consciousness that was moving the dance changed so you know in that way like visiting um i mean it's very simple the example that i've used but there's not been a more transformative experience for me like i met people from all over the world I met seekers, I met people questioning life. I met, I met people that were wounded, that were hurt, that were seeking answers. You know, I met disciplined meditators. And then I also met really strange people that I don't think I would have ever met, you know, if I hadn't gone there. So it was, what is really, you know, soon after I arrived there, I realized that in the world, in the marketplace, like Osho calls it, in society, in our cities, life is very masked. Whereas in somewhere like the Osho International Meditation Resort, somewhere along the way, the masks drop. Could you share top three things about ashram life? You know, living in a collective field of meditators is a potent experience and one that I would really recommend for a seeker because it that sort of field of containment it just has a different juice a different spark a different shakti and what I the things that I would say are quite interesting that I experienced are first was this concept of commune therapy because there are workshops that happen in in, in the resort that are, you know, those are considered official therapy. But what I saw is that when you're in the resort, it's commune therapy because you're living full, you're living in a resort full of meditators. Everyone's working on them, on their stuff. So you will attract situations and relationships that will mirror or trigger what's going on with you. It is the most, it is the most phenomenal thing to experience because the law of attraction is in full force over there. And say, you know, you have a question you're seeking or something you're working on, you will attract conversations, advice, guidance, insights to such a point that you will need meditation to process them. It'll kind of blow your mind. So, you know, 
that that sort of connective field, connect um, collective field, provides us, I would say, a sacred space of healing. That creates some sort of incubation, so that you're protected from the outside world, and where you come from, and your conditioning, so that you have that period of time to kind of just close off and go inward and be in your own process to have those breakthroughs inside of you. So the power of like incubation and containment is also something that I find very, very valuable in, um, in such a meditative field. What are your top three tips for success? My top three tips for success are, firstly, discipline. Sleep well eat well, Reg, you know, regular exercise, take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. So that would be my first tip, discipline. Second one is have safe or sacred spaces to lean into where you are listened to as your highest potential, where you are related to as your vision, where there is an opportunity for you to be mentored or just intent, like a co-creative feel that you can intend with, that you can manifest with. So safe spaces to lean into is the second thing that I would say. And the third one is be your own authority. Be your own guru. Find your own answers. That way, whatever experience or knowledge you get, you own. And what you own, you can apply. Champagne to Consciousness. What an interesting name of your upcoming book. Tell us a bit about it. Well, well, the title really speaks to my journey because that's really how it was for me. You know, I was like Hong Kong party girl with my champagne glass. And then I went to Osho. And it was all about my yoga mat and consciousness. So life really shifted. And, you know, the title, it marks that shift for me. But what is it? So what is it actually about? So um, Champagne to Consciousness was born when I spent time in the Osho Ashram, Osho Meditation Resort. So, you know, I went there in 2008. I did a therapist training. I did four of Osho's meditative therapies. Now his meditative therapies are different to his meditations. An Osho meditation is one hour long. An Osho meditative therapy can be up to 21 days. So I did all of his meditative therapies and I did his therapist training where I was trained in family constellation, pulsation, Zen counseling, art therapy, primal breathing, the, the list is very long, okay? so. As I was going through those transformative process, processes, I, was, I kept writing. And there is a journey that was experienced through all that transformation. Then after leaving, you know, after, after, my, after leaving the ashram or leaving the meditation resort, I went back out into the world and I also trained in many other healing modalities. So, Champagne to consciousness is like a mosaic of healing because it combines what I learned inside the Osho Meditation Resort. It also combined, combines things I've learned outside of it. And it's all this beautiful symphony of healing on this character called Moksha. It's a tale of friendship. It's a tale of romance. It's a tale of love. It's a tale of family. It's a dance between myself and spirit. It's like this beautiful journey and movement and sharing of consciousness that I really hope will help to heal, enlighten, inspire a reader. Zahira, where can people find you, follow you on social media and connect with you for therapy appointments? So you can, you know, I'm quite easily found on Instagram or Facebook um, or just very simply, you could just get onto my website and there's like a little chat in there 
and you can directly send a message and it'll come straight into my WhatsApp. So contacting me is easy as pie. Fabulous. I'll be linking all your social media handles in the video as well as the description. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here and sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Titi. It's been wonderful to share about Osho and about meditation about, and, and about the huge contribution it has been to my life. I'm so grateful. My pleasure.